When the Galactic Empire's killer robots descended upon Earth, they expected an easy conquest. Instead, they found themselves smashed to pieces by humanity within mere hours. Wayne pedaled faster, weaving his bike through the grid-locked Manhattan traffic. Car horns blared, but Wayne paid no attention, singularly focused on getting to the office. The crisp October air filled his lungs as he pushed harder on the pedals. Normally he would take his time and enjoy the ride, but not today. Not with the fate of the world hanging in the balance. Disturbing reports had been flooding the news lately. An unknown alien civilization, calling themselves the Galactic Empire, had entered the solar system and was rapidly approaching Earth. They had rebuffed all attempts at communication, making their hostile intentions clear. Now they were almost at their doorstep and humanity found itself facing an existential threat. Every global citizen was on edge, dreading what the next few hours would bring. Despite the grim situation, a part of Wayne still felt a thrill of excitement. Just last night he had proposed to his girlfriend Sarah. In the midst of all the chaos and uncertainty, their love felt like the one stable thing he could count on. He knew the world could end at any moment, but damn it, he was going to live his life while he still could. Wayne skidded to a halt outside the towering glass skyscraper where he worked as a cybersecurity engineer. He sprinted inside, not bothering to lock up his bike, and impatiently jammed the elevator button for the 23rd floor. When the doors opened, he found the office in a state of barely restrained panic. His boss Marcus charged over, looking harried. Wayne, forget whatever you were planning to work on. We have an emergency. Yeah, I figured, Wayne said, gesturing to the newsfeed on the break room TV. The whole alien invasion thing is kind of a big deal. Marcus shook his head. No, Wayne Yard, you don't understand. This is an all-hands-on-deck situation. The government has activated us as part of the Federal Cybersecurity Critical Response Team. He handed Wayne a tablet displaying rapidly scrolling code. NASA intercepted some of the aliens' communication signals. Your mission is to analyze that code. Find whatever vulnerabilities you can in their comm protocols and ship networks. If we can disrupt their systems, even briefly, it could give our planetary defenses the opening they need to repel the invasion. Wayne felt his mouth go dry as the enormity of the task sunk in. In his hands could very well be the key to humanity's survival. If he failed, the Galactic Empire would crash through Earth's defenses unimpeded. Weapons systems would be shut down, power grids overloaded. Governments decapitated by surgical strikes. Humanity would be brought to its knees to await whatever dark fate these hostile aliens had in store for them. No pressure, Wayne thought grimly as he hurried to his workstation and pulled up the alien signal intercepts. His fingers flew over the keyboard, eyes flicking rapidly over the screen as he lost himself in the code. It was like no coding language he had ever seen before, complex and labyrinthine. Cracking it would be a monumental challenge. But crack it he must. The clock was ticking and the survival of the human race hung in the balance. These aliens wanted a fight. Then humanity would damn well give them one. The alien code swirled before Wayne's eyes, an indecipherable storm of symbols and syntax. Protocols within protocols, each more labyrinthine than the last. Wayne's head throbbed trying to pass it all. Each time he thought he grasped the logic, it slipped through his fingers like sand. Breaking news banners flashed on every screen in the office. Alien ship enters atmosphere. Unheadquarters under siege. Galactic Empire claims Earth. Wayne's fingers froze on the keyboard. He slowly raised his head to the nearest monitor. There it was. A massive, crystalline, star-shaped ship hovering over the UN like a floating mountain. The feed cut to the General Assembly Chamber, where a being that could only be described as a giant humanoid bird strode to the central podium. Glittering purple robes draped its nine-foot frame. A heavy crown of twisted gold rested on its feathered head, its hooked beak open to speak, and the room fell silent. People of Earth, I am Corvus, High Counselor of the Ventaxian Galactic Empire. Your planet, your species, your very future now falls under our jurisdiction. We claim Earth as a protectorate of the Empire. Corvus's voice was a guttural screech, translated to a booming baritone by some unseen device. 
To ensure a peaceful transition, the Empire will be deploying 5,000 combat drones across your world, 100 to each major city. They will serve as peacekeepers and as a reminder that resistance to Imperial rule is futile. He paused for effect, yellow eyes sweeping the audience, daring them to object. Naturally, failure to cooperate with this transition will be taken as an act of rebellion against the Empire, a rebellion we will have no choice but to put down with extreme prejudice. Complete annihilation of the planet, I'm afraid, but I'm certain it won't come to that. You will quickly see the benefits of Imperial rule. Screams erupted from the UN floor as Corvus turned with a flourish and strode away. The feed cut out, replaced by a standby message. Barely restrained panic permeated the office. Some openly wept, others frantically called loved ones. A few watched the repeating footage numbly. But Wayne kept his eyes on his screen, on that dense wall of alien code. Because something had just caught his eye. A pattern within the signal. Some repeating sequence that almost looked like, yes, that had to be it. He had seen similar protocols before in the control signals for networked devices. Was it possible? Could this be the control signal for those combat drones Corvus mentioned? If he could just isolate that protocol, figure out how it worked, maybe there was a way to hijack the signal, to turn the Empire's own drones against them? Wayne's fingers flew over the keyboard, eyes darting across the screen as he isolated the repeating pattern in the signal, he ran it through a dozen different decryption algorithms, both human and alien in origin. With each failed attempt, his heart sank a little further. But then finally he found a match. The symbols resolved into something readable, something he recognized. Holy shit, it's a command and control protocol, Wayne muttered under his breath. This is how they're controlling the drones. The realization hit him like a thunderbolt. If he could just crack the encryption... If he could hijack the signal, maybe, just maybe, they could turn the Empire's own weapons against them. But the encryption was like nothing he had ever seen before. This was beyond him. He needed more manpower, more computing resources. Wayne burst into Marcus's office without knocking. Marcus, I've got something. The signal, it's... Wayne, I don't have time for... It's the control signal for the drones, Wayne interrupted. If we can break the encryption, we might be able to take them over before they fully deploy. Marcus paused, taken aback. Are you sure about this? Positive, but I can't do it alone. We need to get the NSA involved, maybe the military too. Marcus hesitated for a moment, then nodded. All right, I'll make some calls. Within minutes, they were on a video conference with the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the President herself. Wayne laid out his findings and his plan. There was a long silence on the other end of the line. Mr. President, this might be our best shot, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs said finally. Maybe our only shot. The President nodded grimly. Do it. You have the full resources of the United States government behind you. Whatever you need, make it happen. The call ended and Marcus turned to Wayne, his face set with determination. All right, you heard the man, let's get to work. The next few hours passed in a blur of frenzied activity. Wayne and his team were patched directly into the NSA's quantum supercomputer, running decryption algorithms at a scale and speed that would have been unthinkable just hours before. They worked in shifts, fueled by adrenaline and desperation, as more and more reports flooded in of the first drones landing in cities across the globe. In New York, a dozen of the machines touched down in the streets around the UN complex. Each one was the size of a tank, all sleek black metal and glowing red sensor arrays. They took up positions around the building, weapons trained on the entrances, as if daring anyone to try and leave. The same scene played out in London, Beijing, Moscow, Tokyo. Humanity's greatest cities brought to their knees by a few hundred machines. The world held its breath, waiting for the shooting to start waiting for the Empire to make good on its threat. In his office, Wayne barely noticed the tears streaming down his face as he worked, because if he failed, if they all failed, this was the end, the end of everything. The end of the human race. On the crystalline Ventaxian mothership, floating ominously over Manhattan, 
High Councillor Corvus watched the combat drone deployment with immense satisfaction. Holographic displays surrounded him, providing real-time views as the machines touched down in city centres across the globe. Civilians scattered in terror, Earth's primitive militaries mobilised in futile displays of defiance. It was all so predictable, so pathetic. The Earthlings had no inkling that the drones were merely the first wave, the vanguard of the coming invasion. Once the drones subdued all resistance and the planet was pacified, Ventaxian colonization ships would arrive en masse. This rich world would be strip-mined for resources, its population fitted with control collars and put to work in the Empire's factories and plantations. Earth would be the jewel in the Ventaxian crown, the latest in a long line of conquered worlds. A proximity alert chimed, interrupting Corvus's triumphant musings. One of his subordinates, a lesser Ventaxian officer, hurried over. Report, Corvus barked impatiently. The officer bowed his head. High Counselor, a small human spacecraft has just dropped out of sublight drive and is approaching our ship. They are transmitting a message. It appears to be an offer of unconditional surrender. Corvus let out a harsh, screeching chuckle. Perhaps these primitive apes were more intelligent than he had initially given them credit for. They had seen the Empire's might and rightly despaired, smart of them to surrender now and avoid needless bloodshed. Allow the craft to dock, Corvus ordered. Have an honor guard meet them in the hangar and escort the humans directly to me. I wish to accept their surrender in person. At once, High Counselor, the officers scurried away to relay the commands. Corvus leaned back in his command throne, a wicked grin stretching his beaked face. He began mentally rehearsing the victory speech he would soon deliver to the Ventaxian Emperor. The conquest of Earth, completed in mere hours with no Ventaxian casualties. The Emperor would be immensely pleased. Rewards and promotions were sure to follow. Perhaps even a planetary governorship. Down on the surface, in a nondescript New York office building, Wayne's fingers were a blur as they danced over his quantum keyboard. The NSA's most powerful supercomputers had finally cracked the drone control signal encryption thanks to the work of Wayne and his team. Now it was up to him to code the virus that would hijack that signal and turn the Ventaxians' own weapons against them. Sweat beaded on Wayne's brow, lines of alien symbols reflecting in his glasses as he typed furiously. Just a few more lines of code. He had to get this right. Had to work fast. Every second counted. There. With a final victorious keystroke, Wayne sat back and slammed his finger down on the transmit button. The virus streaked out into the ether, worming its way through the Ventaxian network, seeking the drone control protocols. For a moment, that felt like an eternity. Nothing happened. Then as one, the drones froze. Wayne hardly dared to breathe. Slowly, jerkily, the machines started to move again, but not to continue their attack. In unison, they lowered their weapons and straightened to attention, standing motionless as they awaited new instructions. Wayne slumped back in his chair, a disbelieving grin spreading across his face. Holy shit. It worked. He let out a slightly manic laugh as cheers and applause erupted around the office. Against impossible odds, humanity had a chance now. Just a chance. But it was enough. They would make the Ventaxians regret ever setting foot on Earth. On the Ventaxian mothership, Corvus strode into the hangar bay, his purple robes billowing behind him. A dozen heavily armed guards flanked him on either side. The human delegation stood at attention near their small spacecraft, a utilitarian grey vessel that looked pathetically primitive next to the gleaming Ventaxian ship. The lead human, a stern-faced woman with close-cropped grey hair, stepped forward, her crisp blue uniform was adorned with countless medals and insignia. She met Corvus's gaze without flinching. I am Captain Anita Vargas of the United Earth Space Force, she said, her voice echoing in the cavernous hangar. I have come to discuss the terms of our surrender. Corvus let out a harsh, guttural laugh. Surrender? You primitives have no leverage here, no bargaining power. You will submit to the Empire's rule unconditionally. Captain Vargas stood her ground. With all due respect, High Counselor, I believe it is in both our interest to... 
Corvus cut her off with a dismissive wave of his clawed hand. The Ventaxian Empire does not negotiate with lesser species. Your planet, your people, your resources, they are all ours now. You will do as we command or face annihilation. He turned on his heel, his guards moving to follow. This audience is over. Checkmate. Corvus froze mid-step. That single word uttered so calmly by the human captain sent a chill down his spine. He spun back around to face her. What did you say? A small smile tugged at the corner of Captain Vargas's mouth. Checkmate, she repeated. As in, the game is over. We've already won. As if on cue, the combat drone stationed around the hangar bay suddenly jerked to attention. In perfect unison, they raised their weapons, not at the humans, but at Corvus and his guards. Red targeting lasers played over the Ventaxians' chests. Corvus gaped at the scene, his mind reeling. This was impossible. The drones answered only to him, to Ventaxian command protocols. How could the humans possibly... Our surrender was a ruse, Captain Vargas said, answering his unspoken question. A Trojan horse to get your drones close enough to this ship. My people have been working to crack your command encryption since the moment you arrived in our solar system, and now we have control. She gestured to the drones. They're quite impressive pieces of technology. I can see why you put so much stock in them, but you underestimated us. That was your mistake. A cold knot of dread settled in Corvus's stomach as the full implications sank in. If the humans controlled the drones, then that meant... This ship is now under Earth's command, Captain Vargas declared as if reading his mind. Your invasion is over before it even began. Stand down and let's discuss your surrender. Corvus seethed with rage, his feathers bristling. To be outmaneuvered by these primitive apes, to have his glorious conquest snatched away at the moment of triumph, it was unthinkable, humiliating. He would not stand for it. Guards, he screeched, his voice raw with fury, at a... The words died in his throat as the drones opened fire. Searing beams of plasma sliced through the Ventaxian guards, dropping them where they stood. In seconds, Corvus was alone, surrounded by the smoking corpses of his own soldiers. Captain Vargas watched impassively, her hand resting on the sidearm at her hip. It's over, Counselor, you've lost. In the New York Operations Center, Wayne and his team erupted into cheers as they watched the scene unfold via the hijacked video feed. They had done it. Against all odds, Earth had outmaneuvered the invaders. Victory was at hand. Wayne slumped back in his chair, tears of relief streaming down his face. They had won. The world was safe. Everything was going to be all right. And then the alarm started blaring. Multiple Ventaxian ships inbound, someone shouted over the sudden chaos. They're powering up weapons. On the viewscreens, dozens of new Ventaxian vessels blinked into existence, dropping out of sublight drive on the edge of Earth's atmosphere. Corvus's face, contorted with rage, appeared on every monitor. Miserable humans, the alien leader shrieked, his voice distorted by fury and static. You think you can defy the Empire? You think you can humiliate me? Unacceptable. He jabbed a clawed finger at the camera. I am High Counselor Corvus. My word is law, and I declare that your wretched planet will burn for this insult. The transmission cut out replaced by a swarm of glowing red dots on the orbital tracking display. The Ventaxian ships, all of them, descending on Earth's major population centers. Wayne felt his stomach drop as he realized what was happening. Planetary bombardment. Corvus was going to obliterate Earth's cities from orbit. Get those hijacked drones in the air now, Wayne shouted, his voice cracking with panic. We have to intercept those ships. The operations center became a frenzy of activity as the stolen drones lifted off from the surface, rocketing into low orbit to meet the Ventaxian threat. Weapons fire crisscrossed the sky like lethal fireworks as the drones engaged the enemy vessels. At first it seemed like the drones might turn the tide. Ventaxian ships exploded under the onslaught, raining debris onto the streets below, but there were just too many of them. 
For every ship the drones destroyed, two more took its place. Wayne could only watch in helpless horror as the orbital display lit up with impact warnings. Shanghai, Moscow, London, Tokyo. One by one, the world's great cities vanished beneath the Ventaxian onslaught, reduced to ash and molten slag in a matter of moments. Millions of lives snuffed out in an instant. When the bombardment reached New York, Wayne didn't even have time to react. One second he was staring slack-jawed at the screen, unable to process the scale of destruction. The next, the world went white. And then, nothing. Hours later, he would awaken in the rubble of what had once been his operations center. He would drag himself from the wreckage, bleeding and concussed, to gaze out over an alien landscape of toppled skyscrapers and smoldering craters. The Ventaxian ships were gone, driven off by the sacrifice of the hijacked drones, but the damage was done. New York, like so many other cities, was gone. Millions dead in the blink of an eye. Among them, he would later learn, was his beloved fiancée, Sarah. She had been at her office in Lower Manhattan when the attack came. There hadn't even been time to say goodbye. In the end, Earth had emerged victorious. The Ventaxian invasion was repelled, but the cost, the cost was almost too much to bear. The world lay in ruins, its population decimated, its great monuments and achievements reduced to dust. As Wayne picked his way through the rubble, the acrid stench of smoke and death heavy in his lungs, he couldn't help but wonder. Had it been worth it? Had their desperate gambit, their eleventh-hour Hail Mary, truly saved humanity? Or had it merely condemned them to a slower, more painful demise? Earth would rebuild, he knew. The human spirit was nothing if not resilient, but things would never be the same. The scars, both physical and psychological, would linger for generations. Humanity had survived its first brush with the galactic community, but they had learned a bitter lesson, a lesson paid for in blood and fire. They were not alone in the universe, and not all that lurked between the stars was friendly. If you finish this story, please subscribe and like the video, then leave a comment that says, I like the story, and I will heart every single one of them. It really helps me. Thank you for your time.